Hey, what's up guys? It's Dom from Whole Printing Inc. In today's highly requested video, I'll be showing you guys how to unclog your DTF printhead on your small DTF printer. So don't mind my printer, it's currently not being used as much. So in this video, like I said, I'm going to be showing you how to unclog your printhead. Let's say you've been doing some nozzle checks and unfortunately your nozzle check is not looking too good. This is especially good if you're having troubles with the white lines. As you can barely see on the camera, uh, we're missing a lot of our white lines. Now in this example, my printer is no longer active, so I will have to change my printhead because it's at the point of no return. However, the same principles and step-by-step -step guide will still apply for your specific printhead. Make sure to do this as soon as possible when you start to have consistent issues with your nozzle check. Just FYI, if you're printing and you're doing a nozzle check and here and there you're having a few lines and when you do a few head cleanings you're back to normal, this video is not currently for you. This is when you've done a bunch of head cleanings, you've cleaned the print head uh, just like around it and you're still having some issues. This is how to unclog it and hopefully salvage your print head before you have to buy a new one. So the first step guys is very simple. You're going to have to clear your work area and here's a few things that you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need some Ziploc bags. You're going to need around one, two, three, three, four, five. Around five Ziploc bags. The second thing you're going to need is a screwdriver, ideally magnetic, to be able to remove the printhead from the carriage. After that, you're obviously going to need your DTF printer. That's pretty straightforward. You're, all go you're also going to need a syringe and a tube. I will show you more examples as we move on in this video. But basically, a syringe like this and some sort of plastic tube. After you have those things, you'll also need some cleaning solutions. All these things can be found on my website if ever you're having trouble sourcing them elsewhere. And finally, once you have everything set up, I also suggest you guys get some sort of container like a mason jar like this, just something that you can actually flush your print head through. And also alcohol swabs or alcohol pads will be very crucial. So once you have all your materials, you're ready to move on to the first step. So first step for me, I'm just gonna be removing some stuff around here so I have a better work area. I'm just gonna put this here for now. I am currently filming this alone, but I might have some help very soon. So let me just put this here. Now, the first thing I want to do is get my screwdriver handy. Also get my Ziploc bags close. I'm going to turn on the printer in the back. We're going to wait for the cart to go around in the middle and then we're going to force stop the printer. That's perfect. So now, the next step, really straightforward, we're going to take our Ziploc bags, I've already used them and that's okay, we're going to open them and we're going to remove each and every single color. Make sure obviously the printer is turned off for this step. We're going to remove this. Remove all the colors and seal the Ziploc bag. You can put both of your whites together, that's not a problem. Once all of your ink cartridges are inside the Ziploc bags, you can gently move them to the side like this. Now, this is what you're currently working with. You have your print head here, and you have this attachment right here. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is removing the attachment. So, if I put it like this, you guys can see that we have this attachment right here. I like to use some sort of weeding tool or some sort of pin to remove it. So in this example, I'm going to be using this weeding tool. And there's a corner right here that you need to kind of lift off. Be gentle, you don't want to break these little attachments. And also you can go from the other corner here. And that's perfect, we lift it off one side, we lift it off the other, and you have one in the bottom here that you can just kind of push through. 
and you kind of play with it, don't be too aggressive, and you put this to the side. Now that you remove the side piece, we're going to move on to removing the screws of the print head. So what you want to do is simply unscrew. Sorry for the lighting, guys. Actually, let me just turn this on. Maybe you guys will see better. There you go. Maybe this is a bit better. Let me just kind of zoom in here. All right. So you just want to remove the three screws on your print head. This is why you want a magnetic screwdriver. Because after it's removed, you can simply place your screw on the top here. <laughs> Good thing it's magnetic, guys. All right. Next thing, remove the other one. Perfect. And let's remove the last one here. All right, so now I'm just gonna remove the print head. If I'm having some issues, because my screws are getting quite old, I'm gonna have to change them. But, all right, we got one here. It's a bit hard with one hand also to, to film and try to remove them at the same time. Should be good. There we go. So, there we have it. I'm just, I'm just gonna remove the screws. I'm gonna tilt my print head, sorry for the angle. I'll be back with you guys shortly. All right, perfect. So now we've got all our screws to the side here. Make sure you place them somewhere safe where you won't lose them. Now you need to remove this cable, these two cables from your print head. So without further ado, let me do that right away. So when you remove the cables, you wanna make sure they don't touch any ink or anything. Usually you can use a Ziploc. For this example, I'm just gonna place them in the cart. Like this, remove them gently, and I place them in the cart. Now, we have the print head. What you wanna do next, very, very simple. I'm gonna place this here, and I still have my print head in my hand, guys. I'm just taking the mason jar I showed you guys earlier. So, this is my mason jar here. I have some cleaning liquid already ready to go. Now, I'm gonna take I'm going to take an old coffee jar and I'm going to place my print head over the coffee jar as so, as you guys can see. Now, what I want to do next is prepare my syringe. Let me just take this out of the way for you guys so you can see a bit better. Now I've got my syringe with the plastic tube I was telling you guys about earlier. Sorry for the focus, but you guys get the point. It's just a plastic tube. You can find these online or you can make your own as long as it fits inside of your print head. Now we're gonna take our mason jar full, well, a quarter, <laughs> a quarter full of cleaning liquid and we're simply gonna suck up some solution. As you can see, we have some solution inside of the syringe. Now I'm gonna bring this closer for you guys. But basically, what you wanna do is, you wanna take your print head. We can start with the white for this example. You're gonna place, you're gonna place a tube tight around the actual nipple of the print head. And you're gonna go over your coffee jar or whatever you know container you're using and you kind of just want to tap you want to tap putting light light pressure on the syringe if I do it with one hand here you guys will see I'm just kind of tapping on top and this will kind of unclog any you know debris that's building up and once everything looks good I can slowly start to apply apply consistent pressure you don't want to go too hard or too quick because this can damage your print that further you want to make sure you stay straight also don't go in an angle and you kind of want to go through this process and just kind of have consistent steady pressure not too hard and you want to remove it Take a look underneath, and you can also hold it in one hand if it's more easy for you. And you just want to tap it again. You're going to see some ink kind of go up, and there's also some liquid that's going to build up inside of 
where the nipples are, for lack of better words, and you want to repeat this step until, basically, you see a shower effect. I'm going to show you in a different color how it's supposed to look like. So again, I'm just kind of tapping it down, and as you can see, we have some black ink coming out. And once I start to apply some consistent pressure, it might be hard to tell on the camera, but we have a nice shower effect where all of the cleaning liquid is coming out of the printhead and it looks basically like a shower mist. You know, it's no, it's no longer ink, it all looks wonderful, and this is the effect that you want for, you know, a successful um, cleaning of your printhead and how to unclog it. You want to repeat that with every single color until you have that desired effect. So like I said, the main takeaway is that you want to kind of go through all of the colors step by step. The white one might be a bit harder to get that desired effect. And if ever you're having some issues where you don't see that shower mist I was talking about, you can just let the printhead sit for a while and come back to it, go through it step by step. And I want you guys to repeat those steps a few times throughout the day. Don't simply do it once and put it back in. And also there's some very important things that I'll tell you guys. So stick around to the end of the video because if you don't do this, you could physically damage your printhead and be forced to buy a new one if you don't do this properly. So guys, I'll show you once again what I'm talking about here. It's a very messy job, so make sure to ha like have some Scott towels handy. So let's say I go back to the black. I want to put it over and you know, kind of have some good suction going on. I don't want it to be easily removed. And after that, I want to kind of tap it like I was showing you. And if you go underneath the printhead, you'll see that as I start tapping it, there's either some ink or some cleaning liquid that's going down. And if I put some consistent slow pressure, you will see a kind of shower mist. And that shower mist with the consistent flow of cleaning liquid going through the printhead is exactly what you're looking for. You want to go through every single color until you get that desired effect. Once you've done all of those steps and you have that mist coming out of all of the colors, you want to let your printhead sit for a while and go through the steps once again because you'll realize after letting it sit and gravity doing its thing, unfortunately, you might still have some clogging effect happening. So you wanna make sure that you do these steps a few times until the second that you start tapping the syringe over it, you have that mist coming through. And that's when you know, basically, you're done with unclogging your printhead. Now from there, the next step is to take some uh, alcohol swabs like this. So you want to take some pads and after you've obviously flushed all of your colors and everything looks good, you want to kind of just clean the top like this and you might as well just clean your printhead very, very thoroughly. Once that's done on the top, you want to go on the bottom and do the same thing. You want to clean around your printhead on the sides and basically just make everything look nice. Once that's done, you want to make sure that you take some sort of lint-free towel or you know, Kleenex, anything, but I would suggest a lint-free towel, something like to clean your glasses with, and kind of just pat down on the sides. This is where the cables go, go through. And this is the most important thing, guys. If you're not careful, and there's still some cleaning liquid inside of these pins, you're gonna make this printhead unusable and actually might cause some further damage in the cable and in your motherboard, which would fry your motherboard, your cables, and your printhead leading to lots of cost on your end. So you wanna make sure this printhead is as dry as a bone. Now, once you've went through all of these steps, let me repeat one more time. You wanna flush every single head. Once you have that shower effect going through the printhead, you wanna repeat those steps until it's consistent throughout all of your colors. After that, you want to clean the top of your printhead. You want to clean the sides. You want to make sure that you clean this, but not with alcohol swabs or nothing like that. You want to make sure you clean it with a lint-free cloth, something you use to clean your glasses with. After everything is dry as a bone, you can also use some compressed air. I'll go show you guys how a bottle looks, and I'll be right back. So you can use something like this. There's different brands, but basically what it is, it's just some compressed air. So if you look at this, it's just taking out all of the moisture. You can simply, from a distance, blow and make sure everything is dry. Now, once everything is dry as a bone, you're simply gonna take your printhead, plug it back in, and before you actually plug it back in, you can actually take this time to clean your, um, 
clean your cables with a lint-free cloth, the same cloth that you use to clean the pins. After they're cleaned, you can clean underneath your cart with a some sort of, you know, Q-tips like this, where you actually, well, a cleaning foam, which you actually go underneath the cart. You can use some isopropyl alcohol to clean underneath the cart. So you can go from sides like this and kind of clean the cart for any debris of ink. And also you can go from the front and just kind of clean it like this going underneath the cart. These uh, long foam swabs are very convenient for that. Once you clean the cart, you clean the cable. You can also take the time to clean everything here. So in this area right here where you have your squeegee and your waste ink pump, you can clean everything. And also take this time to clean all of your cartridges. You can take out your cartridges like this. And as you can see, they're very dirty. So I would simply take a alcohol swab like this and kind of just go through the motion and clean it. You can also kind of go inside of the cart to make sure to remove any dried up ink. And if you want to go a step further and your printhead and your um, and everything is really clogged up and dried, you can also use some sort of weeding tool and kind of remove that dried up ink. As you can see, we had a bit here. So you want to kind of, you know, take care of this and remove everywhere around it and clean it as best as you can because your printhead is, if done successfully, is going to be brand new. So these are pretty much the steps. I've made lots of video guides on how to remove and put back your printhead. So I'm not going to waste your time in this video. I wanted to make as quick as possible. And the most important thing of this video before I let you guys go is when you flush your printhead, I'll do it one more time for you guys. You want to kind of go and just tap at the beginning. As you can see with my thumb, I'm putting some pressure on the top of the syringe and I'm just kind of tapping, especially on the white ink because it might be really clogged. As you can see, I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping. After that, the next step is you want to apply some consistent pressure. If nothing is going through, you want to repeat those steps. So kind of remove your syringe, let it sit for a while, and go back to a different color if nothing's coming out. I don't want you guys to force it. So after you've done that a few times and nothing's happening, you want to place your syringe on a different color and you don't want to force anything. You really want it to be smooth. And if you go back down to where the printhead is, you guys will see that shower effect I'm talking about. This is absolutely what you want, a slow, consistent pressure on the syringe to have a nice shower effect going on. And that's when you know it's successful. Again, most important thing after you've done this successfully is to make sure your printhead is as dry as a bone when you put it back in, especially all of these pins where the electronics sit, because if not, you're going to fry your motherboard, fry your cable, and your printhead is going to be unusable, leading to lots of expenses on your hand. Hopefully you guys found this video very educational and helpful. If ever you have any questions, thoughts, or things I may have missed, let me know in the comments down below and I can make a full step-by-step -step guide really holding your hand through the whole process. But at least now you guys have a good idea on how to actually go ahead and hopefully salvage your printhead before buying a new one, which will lead you to saving lots of money because me, Previously in the past, when I was having issues with my nozzle check, what I would do is I would just buy a new printhead, but this is very expensive and very discouraging. So hopefully this video will make you save lots of money, time and headaches, especially when you have to buy a new one. And if ever you have any questions or you're not too sure how to proceed, make sure to leave a comment down below so we can all help each other out. So we make sure to you know do this properly and we do not damage anything. If ever you need any supplies, whether that be a syringe, the actual plastic tube that goes on top to flush your printhead, cleaning liquid like this. Obviously, it doesn't come in a mason jar. It comes in a, a plastic bottle, but you guys get the point. And also, uh, the last tip I have for you guys, make sure when you place back your new printhead, you actually take a new syringe. So obviously, this one is used, but you want to pull all of your inks around 5 mLs and throw them away because maybe your printhead has been sitting for a while. So just make sure you pull your ink and you throw it away. And before you pull your white inks, make sure you go ahead and shake this container. Shake it really nice. After you've shaken this container, take your uh, syringe, insert it inside of the damper, remove around 10, 5 to 10 mLs of ink, throw that ink away, and then plug everything in and get back to printing. If done properly, no, no flashing red light should occur. Everything should go perfectly fine and you'll be back to printing in no time without any issues and saving yourself a few hundred bucks. So hopefully guys, you found this video somewhat helpful. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new. This was Dom from Whole Printing Inc. Make it print, you'll never forget.